you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Hello, it's Mr. T with a tutorial on using the Desmos uh, calculator. It's a graphing utility which you'll be using to uh, complete your Conix extra credit activity if you choose to do that. Before you get started, you're going to want to create a, an account or if you have an account to sign in. That way you'll be able to save the graphs that you're working on and ultimately you'll be able to uh, submit your, your uh, picture or your logo to me electronically. So you'll click on create free account and you can create using an email address or some other way. Now I already have an account here so let me uh, get signed in. So I'm going to click sign in. Alright I'm signed in. So I just want to go through entering some equations first and then I've got a couple examples I will show you. Now when we go to type in the equations you can either use keyboard or you can pull up this keyboard down here. For me, it's quicker to use the keyboard, but we have to, uh, when we're entering conics, use some special keys. So if we want to enter, let's say we're going to enter the equation of an ellipse. So I'm just going to make up one here. So I'm hitting the parentheses key. That gave me a parentheses. So I, now I want, say, x minus 2 or 3, I guess. And I need to move, I'm using the right arrow key to move my cursor over and to get exponents, just like on the calculator, I'm pressing the caret key. Now that moved the cursor up and now I can type in my squared. Now I want to turn this to a fraction, so I need to first use the right arrow key to move to the right so that my fraction will be uh, not a fraction on the exponent but to be a fraction of this entire item. Now I hit the uh, slash the divide key and see it gave me a fraction so I don't know let's say this was 4 uh, now I moved with the uh, mouse I moved the cursor out here to add my next term you could also use the right arrow key so plus now I need to put my y term so a parentheses uh, let's say y plus 1 just making up something here now I want to move my cursor to the end and use my caret key to get my exponent. Now I need to move to the right one so I can put my fraction. So let me go back. So if my fraction's up there, if I hit the fraction key, I'm making a fraction of the exponent, which is not what I wanted. So let me uh, go back here. So let's just make that be a 2 and we needed that to be a exponent, so exponent of 2, so write 1 now, do the divide key, and I don't know, let's make this 8, and an ellipse equals 1, and we get our ellipse over here. If you need to, say, do half of a circle, we would solve a circle, say, for the letter Y, and use the square root, so we might have Y equals now to do the square root, I'm going to type in SQRT, and that gives me the square root symbol. And under the square root, I might have something like 16 minus x squared. And that gives me the top half of a circle. If I wanted the bottom half of a circle, I would need to put a minus sign in front of this. So when we solve a conic in standard form for y that gives us the ability to get either the top half of a conic or the bottom half of a conic. Uh, so if you need to do that in your lesson you might have to solve your conic equation here for say x or y. Some other things we can do uh, well so again we could have brought up our keyboard and used the mouse so to do exponents so let's just do a simple circle here using this so we can press X and then use this key to get my exponent and then move over uh, plus let's say Y squared Y hit the exponent key squared uh, equals 
9 that's going to give me a circle of radius 3 here so you can see it's pretty easy to get our conics uh, if you're trying to adjust where they go you can estimate approximately where the center is and the sizes that you want by adjusting A and B and then you can look at your picture we can also zoom in and out to make sure your entire logo fits on the screen to hide this keyboard we can do that now the other skill which we may want to do so let me get rid of these and go back to our original ellipse is maybe I just wanted um, say this portion right here of that ellipse so I'm wanting values of X that are bigger than 4 so we can restrict the domain of our equation here now I need to put the curly bracket key and now I want say values of X greater than 4 so I type that in and now you can see it's only giving me that part of our um, ellipse. If we wanted only the part of the ellipse up here we could have instead of restricting X we could have restricted Y say Y greater than 0. Now you can see that's given me that part of the ellipse. So this in uh, parentheses I mean in these brackets is restricting the part. We could also give a compound thing. I could, maybe I want this part of the ellipse left of 2 and right of here so I could say I want um, X uh, less than 2 I don't know if the or works here let's see or X greater than 4 let's see if that gives me the, that did not whoops I hit the kill key here so let me see if I can go back and get that nope So anyway, I made a mistake there, so you'll have to play around with whether you can use OR. You can definitely use compound inequalities where the X is between two inequality symbols. Now I've got a couple graphs, so I'm going to go to my graph gallery. So once you've saved your graphs, oops, I've got to sign back in. Hang on. All right, I'm signed back signed on. I'm going to go to my graph gallery. Uh, that's not my graph gallery, sorry. Let's, let me delete that. So I want to go here to... Sorry, view saved graphs. Graph gallery are ones from people all over the country. I want to go to my saved graphs. So I made this Toyota logo that I showed you before. The conics are straightforward. To do wording, I used a bunch of linear equations and restricted their domain. Uh, for the most part, I don't think you're going to want to spend the time doing uh, all these letters, but it did. That's how I kind of learned about doing these things in brackets to restrict my or my uh, range or domain of my lines and then I did the other day I did this one here I made a little face so I've got here I've got this ellipse for the face I've got two ellipses for the eyes you can see those here I've got a parabola here for my nose and I have part of a, an ellipse for the mouth and I restricted it to be the bottom part. Now I put this slider here so that I could play with um, my graph instead of here so I typed in a letter but most likely you're going to want to type in numbers there. And for the eyebrows I used lines and restricted their domain those values of X. So play around with, and then the ears, I used a hyperbola, a pair of hyperbola, and I made sliders here so that I could adjust uh, the shape of those. So you could just type in numbers, but the sliders are a convenient way to play. So let me go back to a new graph just as the last item here to show you how the sliders work. So if I wanted to do a, a an ellipse so x squared I'll just do it centered at the origin and I'm gonna put a squared down here and I'm gonna go right now plus y caret squared move to the right divide b 
colon, I mean a caret squared. Now I need to go to the right so I can put my equals one. And it asks me if I want to add sliders. So I'm going to add sliders for both of these. And now I could play around with seeing what does A do as I make A negative or positive values here. More likely positive values for our A and our B. And notice as B gets bigger, it becomes vertical. So you can create sliders. Now if you create these sliders, these letters, if you use the letter A, will apply for all of your equations. So if you're in wanting separate sliders for each equation, you've got to use a unique letter for each equation. So good luck, and if you have problems uh, creating your graph, come in during advisory for some help with playing around with Desmos. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready?